Snoop, I brought my film camera for you. You did? You know what I wanted to ask you? Talk to me. G's up, hose down. Mm -hmm. Now tell me if I'm wrong. Was it, is that not on Doggy Style as it is released today? It's on the first 100,000 copies of Doggy Style. But was that, was that a, uh, uh, what was the reason? We couldn't clear the sample from Carl. Oh, okay. Isaac Hayes. One yep. of my favorite joints. And then I was like, went to go listen to it, and I was like, where the fuck is that shit? Over with. So if you happen to have that, one of those exclusive copies, then you got it. I don't even got it. <laughs> and YouTube got a, a bullshit copy of it. That's I mean, it's on YouTube, up. but yeah, it's... it ain't right. It ain't clear. Somebody got it, though. Look out one time and, and give us the real deal. Who got it? The, the first 100,000 copies of tape, was it tapes then, or was yep. it... Yep. Cassettes. Damn. For all the real G's. <laughs> yeah. Do you perform that? Nope. Come on. Ladies and gents, players and pimps, listen. Snoop Doggy Dogs on the mic, pay attention. One, two, oh, what shall I do? I'm slipping on my khaki suit. Which one? The blue one. Gun by my side as I slip through the beach on a mission, and I'm fishing for my DJ Warren G. Now as I look for the bud sack. To see where my love's at, on the lake where the dub's at. Cognac is the drink that's drank by G, sagging like a motherfucker, khaki to their knees. Bitch, please. Uh. You know how we do the undercover. I'm Snoop Doggy Dog. Not your average motherfucker. See, some of you don't know about the G, G thing, thing, baby. baby. It's the smooth gangster shit. That be driving, driving you crazy. crazy. Now, as you move to the beat and you groove to the sound. Hit you up with the pound. G's up, hoes that. For all the real G's, hey, please stand up. Mic. Man, that, man, that, man, oh, I can't sing. And, and if, if you, you don't, don't give a fuck about a bitch, then you're rolling with the roll. Back with to the, the one, two, three into the four. It's, it's the, the S what? N oh, O into the O. God P. damn Why it. Why am I so fly? I don't know. Why am I so high? It's the endo. <laughs> Hello. God <laughs> damn it, Snoop. <laughs> Talk that shit, man. You Mike. already got my heart racing. Culture vulture and all that shit. I'm like, yo, suck my fucking dick. Larry Bird is one of the ugliest no lip motherfuckers ever. Well, I, I'm, I'm always gonna love acting. It's probably the same way you feel about music. But you're always gonna love that. But I love, I love talking sports. Right. That's our shit. Either Dick Stain Donald Trump. Off top. AKA Deviant Donald Trump. <laughs> AKA Diamond Dick. <laughs> Right now. Mm, that's hip hop, right? The fuck? Ladies you and perform gentlemen, it. That, I don't perform it. But, but you just rocked it for me. You got my heart, like you got my heart fucked up right now. I know that song. That's one of the songs that I definitely do know. I know that shit. Just in your me. DNA. That's in my DNA. Because that was a song that was like. I really wanted that song to make the album so fucking bad that I had to press Dr. Dre to actually make that, because it was a different beat before he got to that beat. And then he made that beat, and then when we put it on the album, we couldn't clear the sample, and it just, it fucked my whole mentality up, because I used to love performing that song. And people used to always ask, like, why you don't perform that song? Why you don't perform that song? Whenever I got my band, it's easier for me to perform that song. Because of, of the sample. Exactly. Yo, that's dope. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you inside the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most fine in Nemo, AKA Nemo Hoes. And today I got my brother from another mother. He's back to do it to you satisfied. Mr. Michael Rapper Paul. You just fucked my brain up. The cold opening just fucked my whole head up. <laughs> hey Mike, I've been watching you, dog. I, I, I love when you grab your phone and you fucking talk shit. When you do this shit, when I, whenever I see your phone go to this, Mode, you in bullshit mode. I love that. Got him. When that right arm go Got up, Got him. <laughs> when that motherfucking right arm go up, you in bullshit mode. Oh shit. I stay tuned in to your show. I got him, man. man. I fucking got him, man. We're, I mean, you know. And it's not, you know what? People think that it's a program. People think that somebody's probably saying, hey, Mike, this is a good subject to no. talk about. It's something that's always inspired by you that triggers you 
don't want to go, right? Sometimes I hit you. Right. Like, I've hit you a few times right. before I've rocked right. about certain things. Right. Hip-hop shit. Right. Sports shit. Just because I know, I know, like, we we, we sometimes see things we, eye to we eye the on same this thing. Eye. We're the same eye. And so I'll hit you. Like, I remember there was one thing. It was it was something during the, the, the Kanye MAGA Trump hat. Yes, and, yes. And we had, I don't remember what my rant wound up being, but I remember we were talking about it because I think I saw you say something. I had to. And and it was so fucking frustrating. And, you know, the the, the, the rants and, and the videos and all that shit, like, it, it, you know, for me, it's almost like a diary. You know, yes. it's like an immediate diary of your yes. feelings, your frustrations, bullshit around, you know, whatever. But, like, for me, it's like it's like when something's frustrating me, it's, it's usually... It, it, it's it's one of three things most of the time. It's either Dick Stain Donald Trump, off top, aka Deviant Donald Trump, <laughs> aka Diamond Dick <laughs> Donald Trump. <coughs> That's number one. He usually gets me real hype. But as far as the rants, it's it's Dick Stain Donald Trump, draft dodging Donald Trump, or it's something to do with sports or something to do with hip hop. Yes. And it's not always bad things, because I talk shit, I mean, it's not talking shit, like the rants are about no. things that get me hyped, things that I'm excited about. You speak on great shit too, you always put fly shit in the air too, it's just a matter of when shit is, is bullshit, we gotta speak on it, that's the era that we come from. We're not gonna allow any bullshit to stay five minutes on our radar without us speaking on it. That's why I love fucking with you, because I like tuning in to your page to see what you own today. I'm trying to see what kind of bullshit you own. Same, same, same yeah. with you. Like when I when I see you, there's been a few times, like I, I can remember a few a few times you went in. I remember one time you you started rocking, you just started freestyling on your shit. And I was just like, what the fuck? That shit just makes me so fucking happy. Like you just kicked for like 45 seconds, 50 seconds, but I was like, that's the beauty of Instagram and social media and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, to be able to pop in and do your shit right now, unannounced, however you want to do it. So yeah, so you know, and sometimes people get people get offended with me and shit. People get upset with me on both sides of it, whether it's Trump, whether it's sports, whether it's hip hop. You're a hater. You are fucking snowflake liberal. You're a fucking culture vulture and all that shit. I'm like, yo, suck my fucking dick Straight about up. all that shit. Now what? About about all that about all that shit. So Mike, I'm checking game, man. You got shows everywhere. You got shows on Netflix. You got shows on regular television. You yep. got sports shows. You got I man. How's you diversifying your portfolio, doing all of these different gigs, man? I'm just trying to do it. Trying to uh, do shit that I get hyped about. Right. Trying to do shit that I'm excited about. And we're in a different. You know, you guys. Some of the rappers are the ones that help break that through on your side because rappers in the beginning were just rappers and then you and a handful of the, of, of, of the guys started acting and then, you know, Hove started doing this and doing right, that and doing right. like, you know, and business. And then, you know, like certain actors like, yo, I'm going to do this and I'm going to produce and I'm going to direct and all that stuff inspired me to like, well, I, I, I'm always going to love acting. It's probably the same way you feel about right, music. Like you're right. always going to love that, but I love, t I love talking sports. Right. That's our shit. I love it. That's me and your shit. Mike, what you doing movie-wise right now, man? I love seeing you on the big shit. screen. Shit, right now I'm just doing this Netflix. I'm doing a TV show. Um, I'm thinking about doing another documentary, something to do with hip-hop and the podcast and shit right now, but I'm getting ready to start doing this TV show. Oh, you ain't done one since The Tribe Called Quest? Yeah. That was hard as fuck. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Where are you at with hip hop now? What's getting you hype? What's get you like this? This last year, I think you know, for as much you know, criticism as I give to it, last year was a good year for hip hop. It was some good music, man. You know, I DJ, <laughs> I DJ, so right. I hear a lot of music, and a lot of that shit is dope as fuck. The the sounds, the music, the instrumentation. It's some dope motherfuckers that's out there. You just gotta discover it and listen for it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some little lyrical dudes out there. There's some females that's dope. It's like. Hip hop is growing and is doing what it's supposed to do because it's not just East Coast, West Coast. It's no. Midwest, it's South, it's European, it's Asian, it's African. It's like, it's global. It's like hip hop has done what it was set out to do, which was spread around the whole world and, and put some love and give some kids a spirit because hip hop was created by kids for kids. Crazy. Right? Man, yeah. And, and, My and childhood was hip hop. <sighs> And 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 you think about how far this shit's come. I always think of that 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 
that Biggie lyric. Like even when I'm hearing like like in Utah, like if I'm, if, if I'm watching a basketball game, Utah Jazz, and you'll hear like the Beat Nuts, and I'm like, playing while they dribbling the ball in like, court. Like this is never you never thought that. Hip hop would take I'm it with, this far. Dog, I'm with you. I swear to God, I'd be watching games and I'd be hearing my song. I'd be like, oop, another check. Oop, another check. I'd all be over the my country. I'd be hearing my shit all the time. Like, you never like, would have thought Utah Jazz would be playing your shit while like, Donovan Mitchell's bringing yes, the ball up the court. Yes, even in football games, like at the Super Bowl and all in big games, I'd be hearing that shit like, wait a minute. Hip hop is a part of every major sports event, every major movie event. Every major television event, anything that's got to do with something that's trying to be reached, hip hop has to be input. And 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 when you when when we think about like these arenas, Minnesota, Utah, obviously you know Brooklyn, L.A., the the, the main cities, Oklahoma City, when they play hip hop, when dudes are coming up court, ninety nine point nine percent of the time it's golden era hip hop, and right. there's a reason why. There's a fucking reason why, because you know those fans in Utah don't know who the fucking beat nuts are. But the, the beat, the sum about that shit, and and that's the shit that like that soul, that funk, that 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 shit, that bap, that boom bap is is the thing that I feel like is missing in hip hop today. Like they trying to re, you boom boom boom. You can't reconstruct one two three four one two three four. You can't, you it, can't do it, one two seven nine. But I think it needs to have a moment of clarity of. Let it go that way for a minute. See, when it finds its way back home, it always finds its way back home. True. Because I've never seen James Brown lose a beat. I, I had a conversation with James when he was like seven years old, or however or the oldest he was before he passed away. Damn. And he still was music relevant. He still was sharp. He still was all of that. So I don't feel like what we've done is going to ever die. I just feel like it's always room for other shit to come in, just like when disco killed the funk for about two years, and then the phone came back stronger, and it never died. That's true. You get what I'm saying? So that's it takes true. things like this to create the new atmosphere of what it is, and these are kids that's creating this. Sound. I know, so I know. It's they shit. It's I like, know. Remember, we had, we passed You have to our, hand it over to them, right? When we created our shit, you, what you think the people our age were saying Fucking when we were doing Fucking dog that shit, get bullshit, that shit out of trend. Here. Get that bullshit out of here. Quickly, get it out of here quickly. Then it became. I got it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You, I, 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 I know, I know. 150% I know. I know. I know exactly what you're saying. I know what you're saying. 150% I know. And I agree with what you're saying. I had to get a real understanding for that, Mike, because when I started meeting with the old school artists that I loved, like I wouldn't just sample their music. I would be like, I want to do a song with you because you're still alive. And then I would get an understanding with them. And then they would tell me, man, I didn't know you was that kind of guy, mm. you all right with me. And then we built a bond. They was only listening to my lyrics. Bitch, suck dick, fuck that, whoop that, fuck this, fuck this. Then they got to know me. Oh, he just writing a song based off of his experiences. And then it had a different perspective on them respecting me more and me respecting them. So it's just a matter of the same right now with this young generation. I don't really understand what they sound is, how they get in on the producer, but the shit is dope. Some of that shit make me move, and then some of that shit I'd be like, it's repetitive. Then it's like, I made music when I was young, and I went through the same shit with my elders and until they understood who I was, and they had to give me a chance to breathe mm -hmm. and to become who I was. Mm -hmm. Then it works. I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. Some of them gonna fall into real shit. <clears throat> into some dope shit. <clears throat> because in the beginning, when Drake first came out, I was like, he's just gonna be here and going tomorrow. Cause I was like, I keep hearing, you know, the basic shit. Then I'm like, this motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. No. And then he just knows how to be a public relation type of motherfucker to shoot a video where he's passing out money and doing all kind of, come on, man. He learned from, like he took all the smart shit that you guys did. Fuck. And, and you're right, because in the heat of battle, he don't fucking miss. Back <laughs> against the wall, push the T, he don't miss. I mean, that motherfucker. Eh. The nigga made Kiki, do you love me, when Yo. Pusha T took off on him. Took his fucking head off, he like, came back. Like, 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 you can have my head, but I'm gonna have everybody in your family and everybody in the world singing this fucking Kiki, do you love me. 
Like, that's the answer. The answer is not, I can't match you, lyrical, wop de wop whoop, but you can't match me with this song that's gonna play forever when they forget about that disc. And then with your birthday party for your daughter in four years, guess what they gonna be playing? Kiki, do you love And for her me? daughter to play that shit, that shit's a fucking, that shit's a fucking monster. That's why you can't, I, I, cause I talk shit, you can't, what can I say about this motherfucker? He's we like, can't, we can't gotta give shit. him his. We gotta give him his, Drake is the shit. Drake, you the shit, I told you in your face, nigga. You the shit, you did that, you stood the test of time, you a fuck, and he's a great fucking songwriter. The Absolutely. motherfucker wrote songs for Alicia Keys and Did motherfuckers really? you probably don't even know this motherfucker. I, like I'm, ghost joints? Like ghost joints, like hits. I didn't know that. If you ask me, I'm ready. He wrote that shit? What? He even on there singing. Right. Listen. Fuck me up. Because he, he came back. I, he came back when you thought it was finito. Over. Over. I thought it was done daughter. Yeah, he, because... Pusha T came with the fucking, the extra sauce. Made hip hop do what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. See, we come from that era where we we love that kind of shit. The, the, the battle <laughs> shit. Yes, sir. We love that kind of shit. Like, Pusha T, you did that. You scored a 10. But <sighs> at the same time, his answer was a 10. So it was like a draw to me. Wait, his answer when he came back with his shit? No, the you mean Kiki. Just, just the just fact that the, he put that yes, record? Yes, the album and the Kiki yes, and the, yes, yes. the forget about yes, all of that yes. and think about this. Yes, yes. And let me give some he money away while we had it. He took the attention. Yes. I mean, he, yeah, no. He, he came back from the dead. He was the walking dead for real. <laughs> that motherfucker came back, zombied out, and, and started doing that Kiki dance on the side of the road. Had motherfuckers, every Everybody. kind of crippled dogs. So many Babies. people had accidents trying to do that shit, Fuck. trying to get out the car and dance and mm -hmm. go ride the whip. Mm -hmm. The shit was a phenomenon, mm -hmm. man. When you do that kind of shit, yeah. that trumps everything. Because I'm telling you, as a DJ, right, whenever I play that song, I motherfucker, whatever the dance was, I don't even know the dance, but motherfuckers be doing it. Whatever it's, the, a short, it's a short thing. There's a motherfucker in the crowd doing that shit, off the top. Man, that's cold. Yeah, it's he's a motherfucker. He's a motherfucker. Ain't it, man? That's what hip hop do, it spread all the way to Toronto, Canada, and look at what came out of it. That's why I'm thankful for hip hop, because it's supposed to spread, it's supposed to go Absolutely. To all over the world into different regions and different sounds. Look what's been discovered, all these great artists. Yeah, it's, 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 it's beautiful, it's beautiful. It, 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 it's crazy, like the, 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 the shit that came from just the idea from from not having shit, right. from not having a music program, from right. not having instruments, from from just damn. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Damn. For you and you breaking it down to the basic elements because that's what it was based what on. What the fuck? That was it. We don't have nothing. So give me your shit. We're gonna plug it up to the power over here. We're gonna jump in this abandoned building and do us a motherfucking party. Steal us a couple of microphones, have us a mixer. Who got a turntable? Let's see if we can borrow your mama's shit. Like everything was rented and borrowed at the party. And then we like this part of the song. We're not gonna just play it again. We're gonna. Yeah, yes, come on now. Come on now. And then dances. Come on, man. And like right now, when you go to a party, this is what all motherfuckers are doing is this. It's terrible. It's it, it, They're like this or like this. Or they're asking, yo, let me get a picture. <laughs> they don't even wanna say what's up. <laughs> motherfuckers will don't want to. Motherfucker, come up to me when I'm with my wife, asking my wife to take a pic. I'm just, she's not Annie Leibovitz, B. She's not taking no <laughs> fucking pictures of you and your bad breath. No one wants to relive this fucking memory. My wife ain't taking a picture of you. <laughs> Give me a pound or something. Keep it moving, man. Shit. Hi, I'm Stormy Daniels. Wait, no, it's not. Oh, <laughs> uh, wait, no. <laughs> Sorry, not Stormy Daniels. Sorry, Stormy Fred? <laughs> That's way. That's a different person. <laughs> what about the soul shit, Snoop? There's some good soul music on. There's some good soul music being made right now. I ain't gonna front. Because every single time I've ever seen you, Ow, and you used to rock with the, with the little boombox. No, there was no funk, there's no hip hop. It would be straight, All straight soul, soul shit. R and B soul, the old school R and B music, the Curtis Mayfield, the Isley Brothers, the Dramatics, the Enchantments, Manhattan's, the Spinners, Delphonics, 
you know, all that good shit. You Cause you play saying? that dusty good shit. Yes, that shit that make you feel good and make you close your eyes and mm, you understand me? Think about the first time you was able to put it in, all the way in. Mm, some of y'all still ain't put it in yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> Just let me put the head in. Mm. <laughs> Mike. What's up with your Knicks, man? They made a couple of moves, man. Is that going to be good or bad? Because it seemed like they cleared some space for something. This interview is going good. <laughs> if you can't do the fucking time... Don't do the crime. Don't do it. To, qu to, to quote the great Beretta... Mm, don't do it. That was that shit. He had the parrot. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. I'll do back up. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't do, do it. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. You might have to sample that shit. Uh, keep your eye on, on the, the sparrow. sparrow. See, I went to a little falsetto. See, y'all ain't no 70s babies, y'all don't know. Who did I have on the show that was singing all kind of old school shit? Was it Bill Burr? Uh, you guys were singing the This song motherfucker song knew. This, the, the theme songs? N this nigga sung theme song commercials. Uh, everything. Jingles and shit. Everything, like. Me, you, and him on some shit on a quiz show would be amazing. I could just see us on a game show, all 70s shit. <laughs> That's what we need to show. Boy, the Glenn Miller plays All in the Family. You know what I'm saying? Like, on, like, on a Shlemiel. Drive. Shlemazel. Yes. Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> you understand me? Like, come on, man. He was popping off over here. He had me in amazement. We did beer commercials and everything. I'm not, I'm not, I can't go that deep. I know a, a couple of jingles, but I'm, I'm nah, like. Nah, he was deep, Mike. He was. That's why I brought his name up earlier, because I like him. Yeah, like, he's funny. He a Boston motherfucker, but I like him. And he talks shit. Plenty shit. Plenty of shit. He just don't have no sense of humor Boston, about him. Boston, L.A., and New York. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Boston. Boston sports. <laughs> Ugly motherfuckers, too. Danny Ainge. Robert Parrish. <laughs> Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale got the biggest <laughs> fucking... Look like one of the motherfucking monkeys. Yeah, he looks crazy. Hey, hey, with a monkey. ML Carr. That was a fucked up looking Cornbread, team. Cornbread Maxwell. Jerry Seasting and them. Them motherfuckers <laughs> wasn't shit. Gerald, <laughs> Gerald Henderson. I hated those fucks. Yeah, they, they had an ugly ass team. Larry Bird is one of the ugliest no-lip motherfuckers <laughs> ever. <laughs> but, but, I, but, you know. Larry shit. Legend. Larry Joe Bird. Larry fucking legend. That's what we call him around this town. Larry legend. Broke our hearts. You bet you. He was a nasty, shit-talking, mean Indiana motherfucker. And he would fight, too. And he would fight, and he was Remember tall. Remember Dr. J? That was disrespectful. Did you find, did you watch that that night? Or because I remember I saw it the next day in the paper, I and I was like, "What happened?" Shit. Boston versus Philly. That shit was a gangster game. That was rude. That's when they had Dale Dawkins on their team. He was a he was a center. He started the shit. Da Dale Dawkins, mm -hmm. right? And Barkley was there too. Yep, he was young. And they thought they were like, and Larry was like, he he. I think what happened was, Larry said some foul shit to Doc because Larry used to talk a lot of shit. I know because Dr. J took off on him and Kareem took off on him. What did you say to Doc, you cocksucker? What the fuck did you say to Doc? <laughs> you rude motherfucker. He said something to piss him off because Doc grabbed him all by the ring of his jersey and pulled that motherfucker this way. He lost, that's the only time you've ever seen Dr. J. You've never seen him like that. Fighting on the court. Trying to choke him with his fucking hands and shit. Like, damn. He must, he must have said, I'm busting your ass, you're old, some fucked up it's shit. It's like what Reggie Miller said, whatever he said to Michael Jordan. When right. Michael Jordan just... Right. Right, he just like, he just like, you're not even hit. You just like fucking like, it's just like, <laughs> he gets you so mad, you just grab the motherfucker like, you revert back to like sixth grade, you're not yeah, even, like, like, you just look like, like, I'm here. Your motherfucking face here. All of your Have you ever face. met Larry Bird? Yes. I've never, he's the only... He's the only famous person that I want to meet that I've never met. Guess who I ain't met? Who? Michael Jordan. I never met him either. And wow. you know what, though? I'm scared to meet him because I know you've heard fucked up stories about people meeting He wouldn't he, disrespect you. He told, so he told somebody, uh, you, you punk motherfucker or something, that went to meet him. I was like, damn, he shrewd like that? Yo, I've heard nothing. I heard nothing but bad shit how he meet motherfuckers. He would be cool with you. 
But I, I don't even want it to, because I know he knows I'm a Knicks fan, so I know he's going to shit on me. Because I'm going to be like, fuck you, Mike, if he doesn't. You can't be rude to me and shit. Like, at least give me a pound, tap me up, something. Now, you know who I met that, I, that, that was cool as fuck? Motherfucking Moses Malone. Oh. That motherfucker was cool as a motherfucker. I met him in Toronto at Joe Carter. Joe Carter had like a, uh, you know Joe Carter is the baseball yeah, player? Yeah, 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 he played for the... For the Toronto Blue Jays. He had something where he had like The curly, that, the curly head motherfucker, The right? one that won the back-to-back, -back, yeah. he won the World Series. He had somewhere at Dan Marino, Wayne Gretzky. All the greats would come to his event. And this motherfucker, Moses Malone, was there. And I was walking in the hotel, and he was in the, coming out the fucking car. He stopped and had a long suit. He said, hey, nigga, what's happening? He said that to you? Yeah, and he said, nigga, what room you in? He came to my room and chopped it up with me for about 45 minutes. With Moses. Yes. That's dope. Moses Malone, God. Were you talking basketball with him? Basketball. I was asking about all that shit in the 80s when he played with the Rockets and how they dogged the Lakers out and how was he getting 20 20? Nigga was getting 20 20 a night. Against goons. 20 20. And he wasn't that tall. 6 9. Man, please. That's sad that he passed so young. Real motherfucking basketball. The fish that say Pittsburgh, we need to pull that back out. God damn it. We gotta do that. We gotta pull that back up. It's the fish spread the, have you heard? It's, it's the, the fish, fish that say Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's the fish that say Pittsburgh. Dun, 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 dun. Have you heard? It's the fish. <sighs> we gotta do it. I wanna be Moses Guthrie. You that gotta do tough. the dunk, you gotta do the dunk sequence in the shoes though, yeah. the hard shoes. Ooh, with the slow motion scene with the Rolls Royce? Was that a cold Doctor fucking doing scene? doing that shit out there in the cold. With motherfucking church shoes on. Hard come shit. Come on, man. There was no gel Mike, soles. come on, on fucking, con on asphalt, with church shoes on. Doc. With slacks on. Don't get it fucked up, he had slacks on. He was on a date. Hold on, sit in the car for a moment. When the nigga parked the Rolls Royce. He had the Rolls. Nigga put his coat up, slacks on, church shoes, went out there, it was in slow motion, banging out. Doing that the was, whole, doing anything better than this recent dunk contest, looking. That was garbage. Snoop, <laughs> my, they, listen. They know not to have me and you as a fucking uh, <laughs> judge. This is, my, this is my rule, you get one dunk, and you fuck it up, Sit the fuck down. Go get me some. Go in the stands and get me some popcorn and a diet coke. You're not doing nine dunks. <laughs> we, it's like a magic a magician pulling a rabbit out of his hat, and the oh fuck, hold on. And you like half the rabbit comes out. And you're like, well, let me do it again. We already know what you're gonna do. I seen the rabbit. We see the fucking tail. Like, sit the fuck down, man. You're not in the contest no more, man. Well, I'd be like zero, motherfucker. You got a zero for that shit. I don't give a fuck that you made the seventh attempt. Zero. Mm, mm, mm. So Mike, what you like doing more now, film or, or TV? As long as I'm hyped to go, right. I don't give a fuck if it's TV, film, whatever. Like, to me, that's success. You want to make money and all that shit, but you, when you excited, like, you know, no bullshit, like, when, when, when the young lady asked me to come here, where and when? I'm hyped to do this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, so it doesn't matter what it is. T t it, and, and at this point, it doesn't matter if it's film, TV. It's all the same. You know, before it used to be films, used to be the shit. If you could say one group, one hip hop story that you'd love to see be made into a film <clears throat> that would make a good film, what would it be? I would probably think uh, LL Cool J. We sleep on that motherfucker. He the greatest motherfucker to ever do it. Well, now that nigga right there. He was 15 when he dropped all that shit. 15. He built Def Jam. He wrote a lot of that shit up there. For other shit, right? Run DMC and all that shit. He wrote some of that, can you rock it like this and all that. That's crazy. First artist on Def Jam. Run DMC wasn't on Def Jam. Right. They was on Profile. It was LL. He broke Def Jam. That's why he said, Ask Russell Simmons who put him in the skyscrapers on that joint. Before Public Enemy. Yo, that motherfucker been famous since he's 50. He's like, he's like, a, like, a, like a Justin Bieber. Like, he's famous since he's 15. A superstar. But he controlled the rap game my whole childhood, meaning yeah. that when he, I'm bad, I need love. Walking with a panther. I need a beat. Oh. 
Simple. Farmers Boulevard. Uh, going back to Cali. Jingling Baby, I Need Love. The Jingling Baby video was hard with them dancing. Yeah, there's so many joints. There's so oh, many. Oh, is that what? That's that one. When he said, "I'm the type of guy to take a girl to breakfast, lunch, dinner, and breakfast." Right. <laughs> <laughs> the cookies, uh, pink cookies, yeah, and whatever. Pink cookies in the plastic bag. Have you had him on here? No. I would that? love to see you guys because you did his. You, I would love to see you and him go deep on the hip hop shit. Yeah, we got to get Double L on. LL with the hat is is one of the longest long, longest streaks ever. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. He did there. his first what twelve years in hip hop. <laughs> I think it was old, longer than twelve years because he's eighty five. He had the fucking hat on, and we didn't see that shit. I did deep blue sea with him every day. I'd be staring at him like because he had the ball head. I was like bugging off his dome because <laughs> for you know it's like uh, Santa Claus without a beard or some shit. I'm like you fucking my whole. <laughs> Like, you fucked my whole head up. Oh, because y'all had to be in the water. Yeah, he didn't have that, the shit on. You know, he'll act without his... That got him to take the hat off. Like, yo, you got to take the Kango off. Or... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to thank my guest, the one and only Michael Rappaport, for sliding by and giving us his time on the GGN News Network. Mike, let them know where they can see you at with them Netflix shows and all them things you got popping. What can they catch you at? At Michael Rappaport, everything. How you spell that? Because you know some of these motherfuckers don't know how to spell. A-P-O-R-T. And, and Snoop, I tell you this. I'll tell you now because I, any fucking time, any place, you've given me nothing but joy, inspiration. It's a fucking honor to be here. You say Snoop, I say where and fucking when. I don't ask any other questions. Where and when. Show up and show out. Nothing but respect. That's how it's always been. Top to bottom. Now, now, now. Guess who I got coming up next? Can I announce it? Because I heard. I'm going to say it. Iron. Mm. Iron Mike Tyson. Mm. From Brownsville, Brooklyn. Mm. Iron Mike Tyson. Mm. Knock your fucking head off. Great story. Mm. Yo, the thing I love about Mike, I'll say this. I told him this too. Because listen, things were out of control with Mike. And the fact that he got his shit together and like grew up. He made me like, well, the baddest motherfucker could grow up. You got to. Uh, what, what am I going to do? You got to. So coming up next on GGN, I'm going to be watching <laughs> Snoop Dogg and Iron Mike Tyson. Sounds like a fucking monster movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs>